Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this morning's celebration of the Holy Eucharist, this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Our collect, psalm, and reading are for proper 14 year C. Our celebrant and preacher for this service is Archdeacon Emeritus Dr. Steve, Steve West in charge of the parish of St. Barnabas, assisted by lay minister, lector, Cicely Trim Regis, and myself, Agnes Bacchus from the parish, Deacon Agnes Charles Bacchus from the parish of St. Christopher's. We hope that this act of worship will be a spiritually rewarding one. Our introit hymn, CPWI 206, when the Lord of all came down from heaven. sisters, our mass begins on page 100 of the prayer book. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
We turn to page 177 and we pray the collect for proper 14. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we sit for the ministry of the word. A reading lesson from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1, and 10 to 20. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs, or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample your courts no more. Bringing offering is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocations I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moon and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hand, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you have made many prayers, I will listen. I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Psalm 50, verses 1 to 8 and 23 to 24, found on page 531. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence before him there is a consuming flame, and around about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers. Those who have made a covenant with me 
and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. 23. Consider this well, you who forget God. Least I rend you, and dare be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. But to those who keep in my way will I show the salvation of God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. Now faith is the assurance of a thing hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors receive approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land, and he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundation, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these die to faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in the way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sequence him, CPWI 456. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 
I did not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. The Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. So, Savior. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes, comes near, and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit, be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what time the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord. Let us pray. Peter to God, we ask you to open our eyes that we may see the Christ in each other, and so relate to each other as brothers and sisters. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may hear your word, and that word would influence our lives. Open our lips, that we may speak only that which is pleasing to you, words that build up each other. Open our hearts, O oh God, that we may experience your grace, and that grace will be sufficient for us. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I preach you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The role of the prophet was a very important one in the life of the people of God. For the prophet was called and commissioned to bring the word of God and the word from God to God's people. And so the prophet will reflect to the people the mind of God. And of course, because they were so often disobedient and went against the will of God, very often the words of the prophet were words of condemnation. And therefore, the prophets 
incurred the wrath of the people of Israel. The prophet Isaiah lived in the southern kingdom of Judah during the second half of the 8th century. He prophesied before, during, and after the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel to the Assyrians. Isaiah's prophecy lasted 50 years, spanning the reign of four of Judah's kings. In today's reading from Isaiah chapter 1, we see the prophet bringing the word from God and God referring to the people and the leaders of Israel as rulers of Sodom and people of Gomorrah, painting a picture of two cities where God's hand had to bring destruction because of the deliberate disobedience of the people. So that hearing that they were leaders of Sodom and people of Gomorrah, the children of Israel would expect bad news coming to the prophet from God. And God was equally disappointed with Israel because of all the religious activities in which they participated. Although it was the Lord who commanded them to offer sacrifices, to burn incense, to observe certain festivals, the Lord was indeed fed up of their practice of religion. So the prophet would bring the word that would say to them, the Lord no longer delights in sacrifices, in, and their incense had become an abomination, and their religious festivals a burden. Why? Because the people's hands were full of blood. They were disobedient to God. They were going against God's law and God's will, and that was reflected in the way they worshipped. So they would come and they would offer their sacrifices for sin, yet there was no genuine repentance. There was no desire in them to change their ways. So they would come, they would offer the sacrifices for sin, and then they would go back to their sinful ways. So here we have the people of Judah, very religious, but not very righteous. Their religious activity did not bring about a change in their lifestyle. Their worship, therefore, was insincere. And they would come and worship God and then go back to worship the idols of their neighbors. They would come and worship God and then go back into the world to practice injustice. So they were in, literally <coughs> going through the motions of religion, but their heart was not in it. And so what emerged was really a series of meaningless rituals, external actions with no heart. They were attempting to worship a God who is spirit without worshiping God in spirit and truth. And so as we worship or strive to worship day by day or week by week, 
we need to learn from the people of Judah. One of the things that will bring us into a closer and closer relationship with God is worship. But our worship must be genuine. Worship must be for us a transforming experience. So we come acknowledging that we have sinned and coming with the understanding that this gracious, loving God who would give his son to die that we might have life is always ready, willing, and able to forgive us. If we are truly penitent, our sins will be forgiven and we will be reconciled with God once more. And so it is important for us to recognize that and to understand that every act of worship is an opportunity to free ourselves from the burden of our sins. And of course, when we come to a celebration of the Eucharist, we come to receive the body and blood of Christ, our spiritual food, so that we are able to go back into the world, sins forgiven, with a renewed commitment to love and serve our fellow men with gladness and singleness of heart. But we must always bear in mind that worship, true worship, comes from within. True worship comes from the heart. And therefore we have to prepare ourselves as we come to worship. We have to examine our heart and see whether we have been doing the things that God was expecting us to do in the past week or the past few days. And when we acknowledge that we have not been doing God's will, we have not been doing the work for which we have been called, we have not been using the gifts that God has given us through the Holy Spirit for the benefit of God's people and for the building up of the body of Christ, then we have to acknowledge our sins. We have to be truly sorry. We must have a desire to do better. And so when we come into God's presence to worship, we are truly penitent and we ask for forgiveness with the assurance that God will forgive us. We have that assurance because Jesus, the Lamb of God, made that one full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. So when we come to worship from the heart and we ask for forgiveness, it is given to us. And so when we are leaving, we have to leave with a greater commitment to do the task that God has given us to do. Because the act of worship as we come before God with reverence, with praise and thanksgiving, will be a transforming experience for us. So that we are able, at the end of the act of worship, to commit ourselves to living a righteous life. A life that is ready and always willing to wait for the guidance of God so that we can know what is God's will for us and understand that with the presence of the Holy Spirit, God will give us the ability to do God's will. After our act of worship, if we engage our hearts in it 
and we are transformed, then we are able to go out into the world and live a life of loving service. Serving with love. Serving without expecting any returns. Serving all of God's children. If we truly engage in our act of worship and we worship from the heart, then we will be able to go back into the world and dedicate our lives to fighting against injustice. Because God is a God of justice. And if we are truly to be God's people, transformed by our worship of God, then we will, wherever we find injustice, we will stand against it. When we are able to worship God in spirit and in truth and allow that act of worship to transform us, we will be able to live a life of faith, the kind of faith that Abraham demonstrated. We will understand that faith expresses itself in action. So our interactions with people, the way we face the challenges of life, will indicate that we have faith in the God of creation. We have faith in the words of Jesus Christ. And we have faith and we truly believe and know that the Holy Spirit of God is dwelling in us. So whatever challenge we face in life, we will understand that God is with us. And St. Paul reminds us that if God is with us, then nothing in the world can stand against us. When we have come and worship God from the heart, we will be able to go back into the world and sustain and preserve God's creation. For when we look around us, when we listen to the international news and all that is taking place all over the world, we can't help but come to the conclusion that we need, and we need urgently to begin to take care of God's creation. Because we are the ones who are upsetting the balance of the weather. We are the ones who are causing the heat waves in various parts of the world. We are the ones responsible for the fires and the flooding and the tremendous storms that people are experiencing in various parts of the world. And so we need to take seriously the responsibility that we have to treasure God's creation, to sustain it and preserve it. And we are only able to do that if we have truly come and engage our hearts in an act of worship to God as we give God thanks and praise for all God's blessings to us. And so we need really to pause. Whenever we are going to engage in an act of worship, we need to stop and remind ourselves that we are indeed coming into the presence of God, the Father who created this universe, the Son who gave his life for us, and the Holy Spirit who is journeying with us all the time. And we need to make our acts of worship an act that is not 
just an external ritual, but an act that comes from the heart, a heart that is that acknowledges God's blessings, a heart that acknowledges God's presence, a heart that is willing and open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we are able to do God's will. And we know that God is able to remove that heart of stone and give us a heart of love. We know that God is able to remove that disobedient spirit in us and give us a spirit that is always obedient to God's will. So let us learn from the experience of the people of Judah. Let us listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah as he speaks to us today. Let our worship come from the heart as we prepare ourselves, as we come into God's presence, as we give of our hearts and our minds and our voices in worship, an act of worship that God is able to use to transform us so that when we leave this place, we will truly be committing ourselves to loving and serving our fellow men and doing what God has called us to do in the world. We are reminded that God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and truth. The Lord be with you. And so we stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 106. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And it is in that faith that we bring our petitions before God as we pray for the peace of the world, as we pray for peace in the hearts of mankind everywhere. As we pray for peace, we lift up the strife to our neighbors of the world where innocent people continue to die as a result of man's inhumanity to man. And we pray for an end to the conflict in Ukraine, in Ethiopia, in Afghanistan, Wherever there is strife, we pray for peace. As we pray for peace, we lift up those parts of the world where people are suffering as a result of natural disaster. The heat waves, the fires, the storms, the earthquakes. We pray that relief will come quickly to them, and even as they suffer, they would experience the healing power of God's love. We pray for peace in our own nation, peace in our homes, and God's peace in our hearts. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the church throughout the world, and so we lift up Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and all the bishops at this time present in the Lambeth Conference, and we lift up those who are not present. We pray that unity and love will prevail in their deliberations. In our province, we pray for Howard, our Archbishop, 
And today we pray especially for the Diocese of Belize, where Philip Wright is bishop. In our own diocese, we continue to pray for Claude, our bishop, our retired bishops, Clive Wall and Calvin. We pray for all our clergy and for all the people of God. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, the president, the prime minister, all members of parliament. We pray for the chief justice and members of the judiciary. We pray for an end to crime and violence in our land. We pray for justice. We pray for equality. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We lift up before God all those who are known to us who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray that today they would experience the healing power of God's love. We pray for the caregivers. We pray for compassion, for dedication, for love. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. And we lift up before God all those who mourn this day especially those who have lost loved ones as a result of crime and violence in our land, those who have lost loved ones as a result of road accidents, those whose loved ones have died suddenly. We pray that their faith will be their consolation and eternal life their hope. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for ourselves that by God's grace, whenever we come to worship God, we will be able to worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. And we use form B on page 107. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified, glorified by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they that may they be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your, your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, there may be justice, justice and, and peace, peace on the earth. Spirit. That, that our, our works, works may find, find favor in, in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we, we also, also come, come to, to share, share in your in heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. In a moment of silence, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray for the Lambeth Conference where bishops of the Anglican Communion are gathered. O good and gracious God, we come with joyful hearts of expectation, offering prayers to you for unity, strength, and great success at the Lambeth Conference. As bishops of your church gather to seek your direction, to share with each other and carry out your will, we pray, dear Lord, that you continue to fill them with the spirit of love and that it is manifest in the transformed lives of these shepherds and the flock to whom they minister. And then, Lord, it is our plea that the transformed children of your kingdom with true missionary zeal seek to transform others by your love flowing through us. These mercies we ask in the name of the one 
who loved us to death, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We turn to the act of penitence on page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we take a moment to bring before God our sins. We ask God in mercy and love to forgive us and to create in us a new heart and a new spirit. Using form A, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you and one, one another in, in thought, word, word, and deed, and in, and in what we have left undone. We are, we are sorry and repent of all our sins. sins. For, For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive, forgive us all that is past, and, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of, of your, your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The greeting of peace form C. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are acceptable to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer each other a sign of peace. peace. Offer to him, CPWI, 327. 327. Lord of the Church, we pray for your renewing.
We use Offertory Prayer A on page 126. To your goodness, Lord, we have this bread, wine, and money to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. The bread and wine will become our spiritual food. All things come, come from, from you, O Lord, Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We use the preface for the Lord's Day on page 130 and Eucharistic Press C on page 137. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Because on this most glorious day, a triple light was given. On the first day of creation, you brought light and life into being. On the first day for our salvation, you raised your son victorious over death. And on this day, you gave your holy and life-giving spirit to your church. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. In these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, According to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our praise, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, 
So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gift of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing God's songs of praise to him. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Communion hymn, CPWI, 571. 571. And now, O Father... thank God for God's blessings. We thank God for this opportunity of coming together in this act of worship, and we pray that we would have worshipped in spirit and in truth. And so we pray in thanksgiving, eternal God and heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Recessional hymn, CPWI, 325. 325. Go forth and tell. Take proclaim my Jesus, Jesus, Savior, Lord, 
bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Do enjoy the rest of your Sunday and have a safe and productive week ahead. Amen. <laughs>